Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 14 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll take a look at using groups and how we can use groups to uh, edit multiple regions simultaneously. We'll also cover some of the mix parameters that we can control with groups, but this video is not really aimed at mixing. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll come back to uh, mixing techniques uh, much later. One of the main functions of setting up a group is it allows you to edit multiple regions simultaneously, but you don't have to drag over all of the regions to edit them. So for instance, if I wanted to trim uh, a whole series of regions in a group, I would only have to trim one of them and all of them would end up being trimmed. So what I've got here are some uh, live drums. Uh, let's take a listen to what we've got. All right, so as I said earlier, uh, group editing allows us to edit multiple regions simultaneously. So if I uh, drag over one of these regions with the marquee tool uh, to maybe delete a section, it's only going to affect just the region that you drag over. Um, the other thing you could do is you could drag over all of the regions simultaneously, but that just takes more time because you're always having to drag down to uh, cover all of those regions. Another thing that can be done easier with groups is to select a whole series of regions and then move them or duplicate them. I should mention that uh, Logic does not actually label uh, your groups a mix group or an edit group. And if you're familiar with other DAWs like Pro Tools, Pro Tools can have two different types of groups. It can have a mix group, an edit group, or actually a mix edit group. Um, what makes a group a mix group or an edit group in Logic is simply what parameters you choose to associate with that group. So I just opened my mixer and you can get there by going to window open mixer or you can use the key command command two. So what I'm going to do is drag over the bottom of all of my uh, live drum tracks here to select all of them and then find the group assignment uh, tab here. Click on it and then choose a group. Now, yours will probably just say group one new. Uh, in a, a previous just work through of this, I had already chosen group one uh, and then I unassigned it. So it automatically will stack another group, uh, a new group for you to select from. And I believe Logic can have up to 32 uh, simultaneous groups, but you'll never use that many. So go ahead and click on group one. And what this is going to do is assign group one to all of these uh, all of these tracks that I've selected. So now you can see that there's a one in the group assignment slot there. So now that we've assigned group one to all of these tracks, we have to define what parameters are going to be controlled by group number one. So the way you do this is click on one of your group slots and choose open group settings to open this uh, group settings dialog here. And what you'll see here is your group assignment number. You can turn on and off each of your groups. And you'll notice when your group is off that the group assignment number goes gray. And then when you turn it back on, uh, it's shown in yellow. You can also toggle on and off all of your groups just by hitting Shift G. Another thing you can do here is double click on the name and give your group a name. I'm gonna call it drums. And you'll see that the word drums now appears in the group assignment on each track. You can also hide all of the tracks within a group. And the way you do that is you just check uh, this little H option here. And this will hide and show any tracks that are within that group. All right, so now let's uh, go over some of our group settings. Uh, down here at the bottom of the dialog, these are your group settings. And these are essentially what parameters are going to be associated with this group. So right now we have two of them checked. One's called editing and the other one's called phase locked audio. The editing option is going to guarantee that when I edit one region, that all of the regions in this group are going to be edited. And this includes moving them, trimming them, cutting them, um, duplicating them. 
The phase locked audio option should be turned on when you're working with live drums or any situation where uh, you have multiple microphones that were recording simultaneously. This makes sure that you don't have any phase or phase cancellation issues between the different tracks in the group. So now that we've set up an edit group, if we make a selection with the marquee tool, it'll actually select everything in the group. So this allows us to make a selection and delete everything uh, from that selection. You can also move one region, and it'll move all of the regions in the group. And then you can also duplicate your regions by holding Option, and instead of just duplicating the top region, it duplicates all of them in the group. Uh, this also works for the Trim tool, so if I trim one region, it'll actually trim all of them simultaneously. Now, group editing is not limited to just these main uh, editing functions. If we wanted to zoom in here and fine-tune this edit point at measure 10, uh, we can. And we basically just have to edit one of the regions. It'll actually edit all of them, just like we've been doing before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my snap mode in ticks so I can get a really fine, uh, fine edit. And then what I'm going to do is trim... Uh, the right regions over the left regions. Now you'll see there's a bit of a little crossfade glitch there. And the reason why it's giving me a crossfade is because I have uh, the drag mode on X fade. I'm not really sure why it does that, but it, it does that. Um, you can also use the, uh, the junction uh, pointer tool to edit all of them simultaneously, just like we did in one of the previous videos. And then if I go and use my fade tool to manually create the crossfades, it does it properly instead of using the uh, the drag mode X fade. So just be aware there's that little glitch when you try to use X fade with groups. So let's listen to what we've got going on now. All right, that sounds good, and uh, editing with groups really makes uh, editing multi-track instruments a uh, heck of a lot easier. So let's go back to our group settings and explore some uh, other uh, parameters. Uh, the next one down the list is automation mode, and although we haven't really talked about automation yet, um, automation mode makes sure that all of the groups share the same automation mode. So whether it's touch, or latch, or read, or write, this will guarantee that all of them share the same mode. We'll come back to automation in a later episode. Volume is another mix control that allows you to control the volume of all of the tracks in the group simultaneously. And the next option, mute, allows you to mute all of the tracks simultaneously. Input uh, is actually input monitoring. It makes all of the tracks turn on input monitoring. And pan allows you to adjust the pan of all the tracks simultaneously. And even if the pan is uh, the pan values are all at different positions, uh, it'll still keep those relative positions. So if I pull it all, them all to the left or all to the right, and then go back to the middle, uh, you'll see that the original uh, values are still kind of relatively uh, maintained. And if I hold Option and click on them, we'll get our old values back. The next option is solo, and this allows you to solo all the tracks at the same time. And then right below it, we have record, which allows you to set up all of the tracks in the group for recording. It arms them all for recording. Now we also have these send options here, eight of them, and each channel strip in your mixer can hold up to eight different sends. What I've done is I've used the send slot to assign a bus to send that information over to an auxiliary track over here that contains a reverb. And so we are essentially bussing out uh, to a reverb track. And if you're not familiar with how to do this, well, we'll come back to it later when we talk about mixing. But you can see that the input on the track is uh, bus one. And what the uh, group send options allow us to do is they allow us to control multiple uh, send amounts simultaneously. So right now I have send one uh, selected over here. So if I pull up my send amount here on one track, it actually adjusts all of them in the group. Toward the bottom of the dialog, we have three more options, color, 
track zoom, and hide track. These aren't um, mix options or edit options. They're essentially just organizational options. So if I click on a track and then um, ch go to the colors palette up here and then change its color, it'll actually change the color of all of the tracks in the group. And this also applies for regions. I can change all of them. But then if I want to go back and change the track color, you just right click and you say assign track color and whatever uh, track color you select will now assign to the track rather than to the regions. So again, this is more of just an organizational thing. It has nothing to do with the mixing or the editing. So I'm just going to go back to the, uh, the red color that I had before. And the next option we'll take a look at is track zoom. And it's pretty self-explanatory. When you have track zoom on, when you adjust the individual track height or track zoom of one track, all of the tracks in the group will actually uh, be adjusted rather than just that one. The last option, hide track, allows you to hide uh, one track in a group and it'll actually end up hiding all of the tracks in the group rather than just that one. So what we need to do is go up to track and there's two options here. There's hide track, which is control H, and then there's show hidden tracks, which is just uh, H. So hide track will uh, make a track go away, but it w doesn't delete it, it just hides it. And then show hidden tracks will bring up any hidden tracks that are there. So I'm going to hit H to show hidden tracks, even though I don't have any hidden tracks. And we'll see an H now on each track, and this hides that track. But if I click on H, you'll see that all of them are selected rather than just one, because we turned on that hide track option in the group settings window. Now just a side note, um, when I was doing the video capture for this, I realized that I didn't actually demonstrate what it looks like when you hide tracks. Um, the way you do that is um, do what we did before, just click on the H on each one of the tracks to hide it, and then click on the big H uh, at the top of the, uh, the tracks, or you can just hit H on your keyboard, and all of those tracks that you selected for hiding will disappear. So. Uh, so again, it's just a way to, um, you know, maybe get tracks out of the session that you're done with that you don't want to have to look at anymore, um, but it doesn't actually delete them. It just hides them. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks again for watching.